but what's ho ho cam i've never been a ho cam what is it do you like that better than phoenix muni or like uh what because phoenix i went to asu so when i was to school there i would go to muni games because it was right there but uh i've still never been a ho cam so ah man i loved i loved muni that's one of the toughest things like muni's always got a little special place in my heart because it was great you're out in the parking lot it almost gives you a coliseum vibe you have to walk across over you do a pedestrian bridge walk over to get to the stadium so <laughs> yes you did <laughs> yes so it gives you that, it gives you that vibe of like a walk the feel you're like that's yeah. like the coliseum but you have like a gorgeous mountains to the left instead of a like a sewage plant or something or whatever the hell that is next to our right in yeah. oakland but uh well, yeah, just get it or barbed wire. There's no barbed wire there either, but hey, that's, that's all seem <laughs> charm there, baby. Let's go. But no, um, <laughs> not the Muni biggest. was awesome just because of the rocks in the outfield. Like, you had a great view. Pokemon doesn't really have the like off at the distance, has like views in the mountains, but the ballpark yeah. itself is uh, like for the A's and stuff is much better. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got more room to do stuff. Uh, you can sit on a they have a grass berm there, of course, which is nice. So, Pokemon was a great ballpark. It's one of the, I want to say it's one of the best ones in the Cactus League, but it, it's fun to go to. It's a nice place to watch a game and enjoy an afternoon. Yeah. What would be uh, if if uh, people listening are are going to be there later in spring training or thinking about going next year? What what would be uh, you know you're you're the veteran spring training uh, uh, fan? What would be your tips? Uh, I mean, well, Hokum, you got to get the mustache pretzel, so you could ask somebody if they want a mustache ride. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, Family um, podcast, all right? <laughs> oh, my God. I apologize. Explicit uh, rating. Explicit rating. No. <laughs> uh, we, we'll censor that out if we need to. Uh, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> no, I mean, it's good there. Uh, if you go down the first baseline, they lift the netting up by the tarp so you can try to get photos and autographs. Uh, that's pretty cool. The guys are a lot more usually, especially early part of spring, hopefully they still are now, are a lot more relaxed during spring training. They're there to actually engage the fans a little more, have a good time socialize um yeah it's a it's really a good time spring training the ticket prices are expensive i will not deny that i mean 40 dollars a second row behind the white home plate to watch a big league game is not bad but to watch the guys only go for like two three innings that's kind of lousy but yeah, you got to make your money uh but <laughs> it's a good time highly recommend it spring training is awesome and if you get a chance to see maybe the a's go the salt river fields that's the best one i personally think in the cactus league the home of the rockies and diamondbacks that park is absolutely incredible yeah. salt river field did you did you make it out to four peaks brewery in tempe Have you been i did there? not make it to that one i made it to fate brewing in tempe and because i never had many of their beers and that was really really good minus the fact i had to call an uber in the middle of a monsoon it seemed it was <laughs> parental downpours my uber driver thought he was gonna die because we're standing <laughs> there the i'm sitting like i feel so bad i made this poor guy have to sit i'm like well, thanks for getting me. And then going up to this hotel, it's up on a hill. So I was thinking at the Buttes in Tempe, which is a resort Marriott, which I didn't know that was going to be that. I was like, ah, oh, cool. I get to that hotel. I'm like, oh, I'm uh, I'm out of place here. Here's a guy. Everyone else is wearing like p- golf polos and golf pants. And here comes me as a schmuck wearing an A's jersey and basketball. <laughs> yeah, what's up, everybody? Like, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I felt bad for that guy. Fate Brewing was cool. A lot of, I mean, it's Arizona. A lot of great beer there. A lot yeah. of great everything there. And also, we got to say, the scenery there, the ladies, oh, yeah, very nice. <laughs> Will approves. <laughs> Will, Will approves. Will approved, Will approved scenery. <laughs> well, 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 you kind of touched on, like, the like the, the guys talking to the people, uh, like the, the fans and stuff. I just feel like there's a good uh, – I mean, obviously, the expectations aren't super high, but there's still a good vibe in camp just with all these young guys. And, like, you know, I think Lawrence Butler, you know, he could call it the new Oakland, you know, with him and Geloff and Soderstrom and – all these dudes are kind of like coming up there with Denzel Clark, like, like they're like coming up the way, you know, what do you think about that next wave of like, we could be seeing Sodders from this year. We could be seeing, you know, Lawrence Butler this year. Like they, it could be happening uh, by the tail end of this year and then starting next year for sure. You know? Yeah. Oh, I love the new crop we got coming up. I mean, there's a lot of great talent in this organization that uh, I think a lot of people, I know like yell off and like some of the guys are very hype, but a lot of people do sleep on them still too. And this team's got the, the way the guys were interacting there in camp. I really think this, I mean, no, I don't think it's like a 2012 shock to world thing. I mean, there's not, I don't think we have that, yeah. but I think this easily could be at least, uh, at least a 72 to 75 win team. It'll, I mean, it'll be a lot more entertaining than last year. I mean, if a yeah, series so. lead makes a team, you'll have a guy running the bases. We'll have guys running the bases this year, especially with the wider bases, the bigger bases. That'll help a little bit. 
it'll be a lot more fun, I think. Instead of last year where you're like, and there's another ground out. Oh, there's another pop fly. Oh, there's another <laughs> yeah. really slow and doesn't need to be on the roster. It, it's going to be better this year. There's, there is a lot of talent. I'm looking forward to it. And the new Oakland thing, which is really cool by Lawrence Butler to say that. I, that was a very cool vibe he brought up there. So that was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to ask you too, because not only have you, have you been there in person for spring training with the new pitch clock, but you know, you, we, I know you go to a ton of minor league games as well. So I think you've already seen it. What, how do you, how does the, how does the pitch clock affect your experience as a fan? I mean, I'm somebody who doesn't really like the games going that quickly. I've never really been a fan of that. I'd rather, uh, I'm, I don't mind if a game goes three hours. I really don't. I mean, <laughs> Will the game could be eight hours. Will would still be loving it, dude. Yeah, oh, I mean, let's hey, be honest I was, here. Yeah. Hey, I still love that game from 2013, man. That was one of my favorite games of all time. Being there until almost two in the morning, that was awesome. <laughs> also, I wasn't working at the time, so I mean, I had that advantage. It was great. It was like, all right, cool. Everybody else is going to go to work. I could just sleep. It doesn't bother me any. But no, in all seriousness, it's making the games go quicker. Um. I mean, you still get the occasional game. It will go long because either like the pitchers are just lousy. You got a lot of pitching changes. But I was in a minor league game last year in Stockton. The game only went an hour fifty, and it was like, wait, what? I drove all. I, I, that's, it took me that long to get out here driving because of all the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. I don't want to have to go home already. What the heck? Yeah. So I mean, it's it for a lot of people. I think it'll probably be good, like people with families and everything else. But um, I'm just I'm. Baseball's timeless. Don't try not to mess with it too much. I mean, I get it. They got to try to keep up with some of the sports that are going now. But I mean, people <laughs> sit there for football games for three hours and there's not a lot of action going on sometimes. So what's the issue with baseball? We got to speed that up. Dude, it, yeah, it, I hear you. I think, um, I think, you know, I think I experience baseball very differently. The home and away games, the away games I'm watching on TV and, you know, they can be, you know, it, it they're long. But home games, you know, whenever you have that uh, that uh, those those games that go like two hours and twenty minutes or two hours and thirty minutes, I'll be like, you know, I'll be selling hot dogs and I'll, you know, I'll be like at where I'm like, you know, I'll look up and it's the seventh inning and I'm like, I'm usually I've only sold uh, as much hot dogs as I'm usually sold by the fourth inning. What the heck's going on, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow down the I game. Think, Slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I, I mean hopefully it'll bring a lot more people to the park, but. I don't know. I, I, I'm expecting uh, for at least for seat vendors to people are going to be like, you know, especially if, with the with the beer vendors, you know, where the cutoffs cutoff hits. Yeah, yeah it's going gonna, gonna to hurt oh. a little bit, I think. Yeah, well, I, I think actually I, I saw a pitching ninja. Uh, he had a really funny clip. It was like uh, a, of last year of Chris Bassett and it took him almost a minute in between pitches. Oh, uh, yeah. Was, and then he had another clip of him like yesterday. Like he got four pitches in by the time he got one pitch in, uh, yeah, like last year. So I started. Yeah. I started vending in Chicago in 2005, <laughs> in my first year. And uh, whenever it was a White Sox game, whenever Mark <laughs> Burley would pitch, that guy, that guy was pitching. Yeah. That guy pitched his entire career like there was a five second pitch clock. And whenever there was a Mark Burley uh, game, uh, especially all the old beer vendors, they'd be like. Oh man, we got to run today to get our beer. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I wonder how it's going to affect. Like, yeah, all of MLB. There's going to be like a slight drop in uh, concession sales this year just because of the pitch clock. You know. <laughs> uh, but I, like I said, I think I think if it has the you know it'll be hard to tell, but if it has the desired effect of you know people thinking okay, like we can go to a game, it'll be a little bit snappier. You know, it'll be it, it's. I, I would trade I would trade uh, twenty minutes off of the game for you know, for not having to vend too many more games with uh, three thousand people in the stands. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. For the vendors on the games where you mean generous at three thousand, there were some games last year. Where it was like, man, there's there's about eight hundred of us here. It was uh, those games. I get it, especially on the night where it's eight eight hundred fans. It's freezing cold. Some of those nights, yeah, I wouldn't mind speeding up a little bit, but. <laughs> if it goes long too, I'm good if it. Let's enjoy that baseball, baby. It's that's what's all about America's pastime. Uh, so, a, I, you know, one thing I think we wanted to talk about. You know what we what you know what we would hope. You know what we think could change about the Coliseum experience, other than the teams, and, and just talk about the Coliseum experience uh, uh, as you perceive it, will. But one thing I want to say too is, I think a huge improvement that the A's have done is their social media game. 
they've uh, they've had a few. They they keep uh, interviewing uh, all the players as they go in between. Yeah, the tiny uh, mics, the tiny mic. Yeah, the tiny yeah. mic interviews. I think that's great. I well, really hope. I uh, think it's good because you need to. I wish honestly, I almost kind of wish they put the name next to the player because a lot of times you don't even know who <laughs> yes, it is. I, I don't know who yeah. they are. I'm glad I do because I've seen most of these guys. So I'm like, yeah. oh, that's so and so. Everyone else is like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, so I, like, know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know who some of them are, but that's a great way to let. Because that's like fans just don't even know who these guys are yet. Yeah. You know, it's like that's like a, there's a major gap there. <laughs> you know, like Denzel Clark is the one everybody's probably like, who the hell is this guy? But Denzel Clark's been killing it in these interviews. Like, I'll eat it all. I'm a hungry boy. It's like yeah. he's been killing it. Like he's had a, it's like a lot of these guys are showing their personality, but which is awesome. But uh, dude, Fujinami is actually hilarious. Fujinami is really funny in those, dude. I like Fuji in those things, dude. He's yeah. like. They're like, where should you take a girl on a date? He's like, oh, you should go driving because if you go on the movies, there's no talking. But you take her for a ride in the car, there's just a whole lot of talking. That's all you do is talk. He's, he's brilliant. He's, he's a smart man. I should try that more often. See how uh, my game goes. <laughs> I'm gonna take my Fuji lessons here soon and see how it goes. Yeah. 